Hey, so I'm here with Sammy and Steph, the co-founders of brand Pretty Lavish. And yeah, we're here to talk through how you guys got started. You guys launched in 2013 and you've been growing so, so fast ever since. Um, so I guess my first question to you would be, you know, why did you want to start your own fashion brand? If you think back to like those early conversations and the, should we do it? Should we do it? What was happening back then? I think from a young age, Sammy and I always wanted to set up business. We probably didn't know what we wanted to do when we were children, but our family were very entrepreneurial. Uh, my dad had his own business. So we kind of grew up around that kind of lifestyle um and i think we just kind of plunged into kind of into the fashion industry we set up as initially as a hobby and we just gave it a go and um, we was lucky enough to kind of set up online whilst you can work with working in full-time employment um and then kind of just kind of took each day of it come and grew the business kind of organically from there we were definitely like had a lot of like work i think installed in us from our parents when we were younger like missing a day of school was just not an option and like we worked really really hard <laughs> at school so um we definitely had yeah real hard work ethic and sort in us and I think we always dreamed when we were younger that we'd have our own business one day we we're lucky to start when social media was just taking off and we had little investment really and um, to get going so it was perfect for us to kind of test the waters and see where it could take us and what do you think it was about um what was going on like in your in your home environment that made you want to do it like when you think about like you know you said that you guys always wanted to start your own business what do you think starting your own business was was allowing you to allowing you to do i think um we were very fortunate growing up um we kind of saw like my dad and my mum work really really hard but also from that resulting in we was able to have a, like a really nice childhood we used to go on a lot of holidays and kind of that um work ethic was really installed in us kind of like you work hard um and you you can do amazing things like dad always used to sit us down and go come on what do you want to do when you're older <laughs> i think i said to him oh i want to be an accountant because that's what my mum did at the time and um he was like come on you can dream bigger than that and um not that there's anything wrong with kind of because that's the industry i went down but he just kind of really pushed us to kind of dream big and believe that we could achieve anything i feel that that really was installed in us from an early age I think like you said as well that we probably definitely put two and two together seeing our parents work so hard and also recognising that we were very privileged and had an amazing upbringing and knowing that if we did the same when we was older we could create an amazing life for ourselves as well. I love that so do you think then that a bit like a key element of that then is is freedom and choice? Definitely I think as well I think more so I think subconsciously when we were younger, yes, like we might not have understood that at the time, but especially kind of later life after school, I used to do a lot of reading and kind of study people that were successful. And it was all about kind of creating that freedom for yourself and being able to have control over your, your life. Um, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. That's a big thing for both of us, like being in control of our destiny and knowing that we can create anything that we want to in life and it's all down to us rather than feeling like you're relying on on someone else to make your own dreams come true it's a really powerful motivator for sure what do you think about the other side of that in terms of you know because obviously there's that you can control your own destiny and you can you can you can work really hard to build the life you want how does that how does that risk weigh on you guys and how do you how do you feel about you know the that, you know it, it's it, it's on your shoulders and you, know, you are relying on yourselves but then you have other people relying on you, on you too. I think it's a motivator to be honest and um, for me having that kind of you know there isn't a choice you've got to do well you've got to you set your goals you've got to kind of achieve something it's kind of like that mindset of telling yourself you are going to achieve this you have got responsibility and it's kind of putting that I'd say pressure on yourself, but actually making yourself hit your target. Especially over the last few years as the team's grown. And obviously in the early days, it was just me and Steph. So there probably wasn't as much pressure. It was just me and Steph kind of working hard to try and do well for ourselves. But as we've kind of 
gone through the years and the team's grown, there is an element of pressure, but it, like Tess said, it is a motivator. And I think, like, I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, knowing that we've got so many people to pay each month and having that kind of a week where you're thinking, oh my God, like, I don't think it's going to be okay, but we definitely had the mindset, like it was a big driver for us and we straight away turned into, rather than kind of worrying and panicking about what was happening, just making sure like we're not going to let this kind of destroy us and what can we do to kind of keep going and almost thrive through the situation. And I always think the opportunities lie in place of adversity and yeah, having that mindset, I think is really, really helpful. You think about when you... You know, like where if you if you go back to like when you first started, do you remember what it felt like when you got your first customer orders? My first order was my boyfriend's mum, so it was like a sympathy order, like oh you've launched. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. I remember that one, but um, I remember it was hard at the beginning, like like thinking that it was going to take off a lot easier than it did, and. I remember when we used to kind of take all the parcels to the post office and I used to be in the queue behind all the Amazon and the eBay sellers that used to have like massive like stacks of parcels and one time the um, guy behind the counter was like, oh, you've only got two today. And I was like, yeah, just two. <laughs> I was like, oh God, like when is this going to pick up? But it, it was hard in the early days. Um, but you definitely don't forget, yeah, your first, first few orders. Yeah, I think as well, we didn't really say too much when we first launched. I think we was nervous about what other people were thinking, which I really regret because kind of your family and your friends are going to be your biggest supporters. But because we were quite an introvert as people, like we were not one for kind of shouting about ourselves. So um, we kind of didn't say anything for quite a while. And it wasn't until kind of it would crop up for what you've been doing. And, you know, um, that is when we kind of told people I, I do think though that there is this there is this sort of um stereotypical entrepreneur who is incredibly confident and self-assured and yeah will like shout about their business to anyone who is willing to listen or not willing um <laughs> and, and and actually I think I understand what you guys are saying about the confidence element of it and I can definitely relate to that too like wanting things to be perfect like okay if we get here then we can start like really shouting about what we're doing yeah but also in a way you know you guys were you guys were spending that time just quietly without that external pressure just learning how to how to do it and then also in in some ways then the, the product kind of speaks for for itself and then and and then what you're building then is your own like true success. So I, I'm not. So I, I hear what you're saying about like having that having that confidence. But the fact that you guys, I think that the fact that you guys, you know, are are introverted in that in that way, mm -hmm. made, made you, you know you want to create the best business rather than the biggest amount of hype. What do you think um, have been some of like the most challenging since you started? Like were there ever moments where you thought? oh this maybe isn't worth it let's go back to our jobs definitely think in the early days there were so many times where we questioned is this worth it like what are we doing because I think it took us quite a long time to get momentum in terms of like kind of strong sales presence and um yeah you, you do you do question a lot in the first kind of few years whether this is worth it but I feel like that's what separates kind of the people that are successful and the people that kind of would give up uh, you guys remember what your first ever jobs were uh, yeah, um, mine was Pizza Hut, I think. <laughs> what did you do at Pizza Hut? I was a waitress, but it didn't last very long because I didn't actually really enjoy it. So I think I moved from Pizza Hut and then I worked in a zoo. And then my first real job was actually working at Selfridges in, ca in the cash office, counting all the money. Well, that's interesting. The zoo yeah. office sounds kind of fun too. Yeah. Yeah, and that was good. I used to take all, um, I used to be in the office and like take everyone's ticket money when they come through the um, park doors so that was good fun as well yeah I was a waitress as well at the local pub and then in, I worked in a um, wedding shop when I was younger I don't know why but I always to have my own wedding. oh so yeah I remember that I volunteered and, and worked there for a while which was good um but yeah I remember you said having like three jobs at, at one time like whilst you were <laughs> yeah 
yeah again I think I just kind of wanted to really get stuck in I, I went to university and like lasted three months I thought this is not for me I just want to really get stuck into work um which yeah I don't know whether that was the right thing or not but yeah for me I think I think it sounded like a good I think it sounds like a good sounded like a good decision you know you were kind of sure of yourself and sure of what you wanted to to do and similar to what you're saying about you know it always being um you know you always kind of wanting to be in control of your own destiny and be relying on yourself like yeah. I think you have that mentality I think from a brand owner perspective like it's really good to be able to get a sense of you know what customers might be looking for like what people are responding to in terms of like you know influencers and like different styles of clothing that you know that you can you can draw inspiration from um but yeah with the with the I, th- I i i do i do i do see like sometimes that brand owners can get like quite stressed with comparing themselves to other businesses especially going back to what we were talking about before where you know especially if you're the kind of um entrepreneur where you're not inclined to like shout about yourself like every five minutes like on instagram it does feel like there are those people and sometimes at least for me that drives a little bit of that pressure to be a bit more outward facing when I would prefer to be behind the scenes. I'm like, well, well, they're doing it. And actually that seems to be having a good effect for them. So like we should do it. But naturally, if I, if I didn't see it, I probably wouldn't ever do it. Yeah. I guess it's pushing yourself outside your comfort zone as well. I think that's something that me and Sammy really try to do. Like always kind of say yes to kind of things that do scare us a little bit because it, that's what kind of makes you grow as well. Like um, public speaking for us is like the most terrifying thing, but we have kind of done a few events where we've been to and you know you, you, you make yourself do it and you never it might not be perfect the first time but you will find people that do come up to you and say like you know that was really helpful so I think sometimes you can be prone to overthinking something um, or maybe self-doubting yourself and really kind of you just need to kind of go full steam and just go for it. So um, it, is, it is quite fun to to like think to, to sort of go like take a trip down like memory lane and think oh yeah we did that and we did that and that was really really like difficult and we overcame it but I think when you're in the moment it's almost I think that almost helps you if you don't think over if you don't think about it too much because other because you just have to keep like forging your head really step by step yeah definitely. Um, and it's good to look back but with a with a little bit of distance I think if I if I let myself like think about you know today going on what we're responsible for I'd probably just my head would probably just explode (laughs) I think as well it's kind of like documenting those earlier things things that you when we first started we had a desk in the back of our mum's lounge and we haven't got a picture of it and I wish we had a picture of kind of us working and that kind of set up to be able to look back on and kind of really yeah yeah because I think when you first start you don't think you just well you're just doing and yeah that's where I go and work like you don't necessarily think about having to like document it every yeah. step of the way like I was trying to find a screenshot of our first ever order which was probably my sister um <laughs> which yeah. it was exactly how it was on Silk Fred for you know when we first got going as well it was definitely like friends and family like yeah orders for sure and I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, please buy something. And um, I, w- I wish I had like a screenshot of it. And I was going back through our system. I was like, oh, like we've changed, you know, we kind of changed how we structured our data. And like, it wasn't, the information was kind of there, but not there and not in the screenshot that I wanted. And I remember, and I was thinking like, why wouldn't I, have, why wouldn't I take a photo of our first order? I should have done that. But back then we were just, we were just like doing it and just like cracking on. So I don't know. Even now, like, I always think, like, I'm so busy. I don't know how, like, I forget to post things on, on my own social media to promote, like, when good things happen. And, like, you're just so in the day-to-day kind of, like, plowing through, like, your goals and, and striving to, yeah, I don't know. You're just busy, aren't you? And it's hard to remember to document everything. But it's definitely good if you could take a step back and, um, yeah, you could take a picture or a video or, or screenshot and, can look back and realize how far you've come mm. we've got pictures we've got like we've created i think it was last year we created like a memories folder um where we started putting um i have pictures and some of them are like awful but they are so good to look back on i think 
Sam, you, you and Ben were at one point creating a scaffolding for our backdrop for us to take pictures against in our garage. <laughs> We've got a picture of it and it's just like, oh God, what were we thinking? But then it just makes you appreciate kind of how far you've come. Going back to what we were saying before about, you know, not documenting the lows or the more boring stuff. Like, do you guys feel sometimes when people have an idea of like what it's like to start and then run a fashion brand that there's maybe like a disconnect between what they think it is and then what it actually involves? I think we're quite lucky as well. Um, like our mum's so supportive and we've got a like, really good, and our partners as well, got really good like kind of family support around us. So like when we are having the bad days, like, or even between me and Sammy, like if I'm having a bad day, then it's nice that she can be able to like come pick me up and vice versa. Um, I think without that, I, I, I take my hats off to someone who can run their business on their own because it is just so full on and it's having those people around you to kind of like who understand and pick you up when things aren't going so well and kind of give you like a bit uh, like be there with you when your things are going well and kind of enjoy the success that you're having together so I think it's kind of I think that's something that I'm really really grateful for the fact that we've got good kind of sort of family and friend support around us yeah yeah I think so too. like I agree too like you know Silk Fred like I co-founded it with two other people and we're we're very different and we have like very different skill sets mm-hmm. and it's good. I think sometimes it's good for like the challenge as well like sometimes it feels like well, it could be quite nice to just sort of you know just forge ahead like doing things like exactly how like you know you'd want to do them but actually having someone to sort of you know challenge and say well have you thought about and and yeah like and also you know try and be as supportive as possible and kind of in your corner when things are a bit difficult like it definitely helps and having the support the the home the support of the home team um yeah definitely (laughs) when it's your own business you put you're putting everything thing you have into it so you literally all and it is a lot of kind of sacrifice of your time and your life is dedicated to kind of building the business so i feel like you need to have kind of people that are kind of supportive of you around you because um it is a difficult journey to go on it's- yeah i think i think you can tell because sometimes you guys like feature your team members like on your social and you can tell like they're so so passionate about pretty lavish and the work that you guys do and I think I think yeah like you know to to go to have the opportunity to work for you know people like you and a brand like like you have must be you know it must be so it must be such an exciting such an exciting opportunity for them so and I think I think you know there you know you can I think you can tell like they're a hundred percent behind you as well which is which is what you need yeah and we wouldn't be anywhere without our team either because i feel like we we value them individually and as a whole as well because they bring so much and that we couldn't be we couldn't do it without them so we are, we are so grateful that we have got a really good people and like a really nice team within within the business mm-hmm.